Okay, in this next section, we are going to prepare for data collection using a smartphone or a tablet. So one of the newer options in Streets is that you can do data collection with an iPhone, iPad, or Android, or similar type device. It's a little bit different than the old PDA application. And I would strongly suggest to read page 30, which discusses some of the limitations and tips in the iTree Streets manual that you can see right here. One of the things that I do want to try to explain is just the data flow with this web form system. So you have to first have your streets project created or an eco project if you're using eco so that is done on the desktop what we will be doing is sending a project configuration to a server and there will be a unique key associated with your project and also on that server so somebody out in the field can then be send a hyperlink with that unique key and what that does is it allows them to then pull that project configuration that you sent with the unique key onto their smartphone or iPad, let's say, and it opens up a web form on their internet browser. So it's not an app. It's not a program that is running and storing data on the phone. It's basically a form for entering data. And once that data is entered, it's cached in the browsers in the browser cache basically so it's not saved anywhere on that phone so keep that in mind and so once it's on that form it has to be submitted back to the server and again that unique key is what ties it back into your project so the project manager with the desktop will then pull in that data to populate the project so think of it as a three-point system, desktop to server to the field and then reverse. So if we change something on the desktop, we then have to send an updated project configuration to the server. And the person out in the field then has to reload that configuration so that they can have access to any new updates. Say we changed and added in an other two or we added in a bunch of new species. So Anytime you make a change, it has to be saved, sent back to the server, and then pulled into the device. You do have to be careful, though, because you don't want to pull in a new configuration if you have data on the device because it will wipe it clean. So I also advise people to try doing a, a very few trees, do the pilot project, understand the system, see how it works, see what happens when you shut your browser in the middle of data collection and then reopen it, see if it's caching properly, and before you go out and start collecting a large amount of trees and find out that you're not doing something properly or it's not working the way it should. Devices all operate somewhat differently, so proceed with caution. Send data frequently from the field back to the server, because once it's on the server, we do have a way of actually going in and finding that data but if you collect a week's worth or two weeks worth of data and you just have that cached on the browser on that phone there is no way for us to retrieve that if you somehow close that browser and the cache is cleared it's only in your browser on that device so you have to get it up to the server and then we have ways that we can go in and dig into the data based on the unique key so utilizing these mobile forms for data collection, we do initially need internet connectivity to send the project configuration to the server. and That device will then have to be able to pull in that configuration. So connectivity is needed there. Once you're doing data collection, those forms are cached. So if you lose connectivity, you typically can still collect data and store it on that browser's cache. However, you will then need to reacquire connectivity at some point to submit data back to the server. So that's something to be aware of if you don't have a data plan that you 
are going to have to periodically regain connectivity to submit your data. The other thing I would advise you is to test your browsers carefully to see that this works. You can do this by putting it in airplane mode to see what happens when you lose connectivity, if you can keep caching data. And if it doesn't work with, say, Firefox, try it with Chrome or try it with the Android browser. They all behave somewhat differently on different devices. So you're, you're going to find some variations in the way that every device handles the HTML5 code. So those are some of the basics before we actually get started.